and in about an hour I can show you how to do this amazing galaxy painting totally accessible for beginners totally fun for experienced painters get your brushes get your paints get your canvas and meet me back at this easel right now and we are gonna do this and I'm gonna blow your mind with how fun it is all right let's go We're coming back. We've been excited about galaxy painting. It is good to see you. We're going to get our space on. If you're new to Heart Party, this is how it works. I do a thing, you do a thing. Together we get a painting done. And I'm going to explain to you the correct way to galaxify. Yeah, we're going to actually really, really, really paint some nebulas. We're actually doing uh, kind of the Karina Nebula today. So I'm super excited about that. We're gonna get our geek on and our space on. First things first, materials. You're gonna see this black canvas. And the reason, I usually start with the white canvas, but we're gonna start with the black canvas today because there's a couple ways you can get this black canvas. You can buy canvases now that are already black. And if you're painting with a little brush, I feel like you should start this piece with it already black. That way they can just enjoy the fun part of it and aren't worn out. But I did this by just applying two coats, two coats, two coats of Mars black paint. Okay? But I could have bought this already black. I just applied two coats and I didn't think you needed to just sit through me painting two coats of black paint. So first, there was nothing. Just blackness. But then I also had this creative idea, so I'm going to go over the palette. The palette is polyethylene blue, green shade, or phthalo blue. This is naphthol crimson. Naphthol crimson, and I like this. You could get a deep magenta as well and get away with it. I've got cad yellow, mm, but hue. Don't eat the real cad. I got dioxane purple. I have a little black Mars black here just in case so you remember that Mars black, I painted that with two coats, titanium white, and then I have a little bit of my gloss medium and varnish, which you guys should all have in your studios by now anyways. If you're brand new, you should definitely have this because at the end of this, I want you to varnish this and put it up. And there's going to be an end card with a how to varnish video. So awesome that. You guys saw the galaxy painting. You got real super excited about it. That's up on Etsy if anybody is ready for that. Make sure you've got a nice little uh, cup of water. Mm, that helps because acrylic paint is water-based. And this one is kind of crazy. So what we're going to need is we're going to need some jacked up brushes. The trick to this is some just messed up brushes. And I'm going to show you an example of like what I mean. How just... Look how abused. See, I never throw my brushes out. I keep my abused brushes because then they become alternative art tools. So it's actually kind of good when you lose a couple, like when you've been just rough on them and you've been scrumbling with them and doing things because they become great cloud and space nebula brushes. If, however, you're really new to painting and you haven't had the privilege yet to just destroy a brush, look. They make brushes, stippling brushes. This is a mop for acrylic. This is a short round. These you can just buy at the art store. But what you want is something that's like a That's what you want. So you can get the soft thing. So those are the things that you need. A delicious beverage, yes, for your galactic painting. Because we're gonna paint millions and billions and trillions of stars. I also have sort of this little moppy brown. I actually use this to hit another brush against. Sort of a bright, abused brush. And then for some detail work, I have little detail rounds by Creative Mark, and I have a quarter inch braid. This is just the kind of stuff you want. This is going to go in really quick. Hair dryer makes your life easier. All right, let's get started. Let's get our space on. Because we're going to paint millions and billions and trillions of stars, and it's going to be so fun. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take the emptiness of space. I'm sure you're hearing my, my dog in the background. Hear the emptiness of space, and we're going to start giving it some light. Okay, you ready for that? We're going to start giving this some light. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to take this little brush here. I'm going to get it wet, right? 
and I'm going to get some paint on it. All right. Now here's one of the first things that we do different than everybody else is we start with our stars in here. Now I'm going to stand back and I'm going to whack this brush into this brush. You guys can absolutely use a practice sheet of paper before you hit your black canvas. But I am going to populate my sky. I'm going to end up with paint all over. This is not neat. Don't do this near your fine china or things that you're super fond of. If you guys have done the toothbrush with me before, you're absolutely welcome to do that uh, here. The toothbrush trick will work as well, which is just use an old toothbrush and go flick, flick if you need a little more control. But I kind of, this is how I get my waves and stuff. I like this. It gives me this sort of random, I'll change the direction I'm whacking. And you're like, wait, that's different than what everybody else is doing. That's right. We put in stars because you know what? Space is deep. It's endless and it's deep and it has depth. Depth like a Jason Silva shot of awe video. You should go watch one of those because that'll just blow your mind. Deep like we're in the singularity and stuff is happening, okay? So you got to put stars in. Then what you're going to do? You're going to dry those stars. So we've dried that. Um, remember with your hair dryer, it's not the heat, it's the air. Keep it about six inches back, move it around. The reason we want to have it dry is so we can create a layered effect and we don't want our little white stars picking up into our paint. Now I'm going to get one of my super abused brushes. I very much like my this super abused brush. It's a half inch angle on a, on a longer handle. And I'm going to come get it just a little bit wet, but then I'm going to dry it off on a paper towel. I'm going to get a little bit of blue, just straight blue, add a skitch of white, just a small amount. And I'm even going to put a little of my gel medium in there because I want to make it a little more translucent. And I'm going to start putting in my nebula shape. Here's what you have to do to really succeed at space is not make patterns, not make like really geometric shapes. You want to wander around. You want to be like... You want to be like, I'm like Jackie Chan, and I'm like the drunken monkey, and you know, you want to be wandering around here, just being crazy, just being crazy. My pressure, another thing that's happening is my pressure is very, very light, okay? My pressure is very, very light. See, I got a little bit of that gel medium, I get a little bit of that white paint, so wipe off excess. So as I'm painting, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. And you can see how where this nebula is, this gorgeous blue nebula, which is going to kind of wind down this direction. Right? Are you having fun yet? I love this. Millions and billions and trillions of stars in the space. Ah, just love space movies. Just like seriously love me some sci by awesomeness. I will absolutely, I'm one of those um, enjoyers of sci-fi that I will mix franchises. I will Doctor Who with some Star Wars and layer over some Star Trek because I just don't believe in division. I think all the sci-fi is good. I'm going to come down here. I'm keeping this pressure kind of light. It's tinting. Right now, what's happening is it's sort of just telling me where my blue nebula is going. And I'm doing this thing, it's called scrumbling. So if you didn't have a messed up brush, you will by the end of this. Right? Scrumbling. I'm sure my palette cam is on because you guys will be like, what is she talking about? We are doing our space race. We are doing our space race. We are doing our space race. And it's really fun. Oh my god, I think I just had a blue squeeze moment. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You guys liking my Yoda hat? I'm liking my Yoda. I'm so excited to be putting this up. Seriously, this is a piece I'm personally excited about. I was so thrilled to know you guys were excited about it that you wanted to know how to paint space. And look, once you can paint it on this, you can paint it on anything. You can spray paint a wine bottle black and then do space on it. You can definitely take like black jeans or black denim jacket and you can space those up. You can pretty much just paint anything you want black with the appropriate medium 
And then once you understand this process of layering the colors, you will have space. By the way, this is great for clouds. Do you see how I'm like wandering down and I'm wandering up, I'm wandering down. You gotta be like that. You gotta be like. Mm -hmm. I'm a little wound up today, you noticing? I'm noticing I'm a little energetic today. Don't know what that's about. Just happy, I think. Happy to be painting this. For sure, happy to be getting out of my bottleneck and getting some videos up. Getting stuff working again, I love that. So these are just some weird, wandery little shapes. Hopefully you're kind of seeing it. And look, you don't have to tell people this is the Carina Nebula. They don't need to be looking up the star pattern, right? I mean, I just had to pick one to use. And you know they totally, like, especially for Pinterest, they, like, completely edit these things like crazy. So you're going up, I'm going down, I'm going up, I'm going down. Just layering it up. And it's that translucentness to the paint that's going to create that deep space. And we're going to keep spattering, don't worry. The spatters, and we're going to have paint on us. We're going to have paint around, but we're going to have a good time. Right? Now, I feel like I need some blue up here. Hopefully, you can just really see how I just create this sort of random particle gas, gas shapes. This is going to so help you with clouds and other things. Sometimes it's weird stuff. It's like painting a jellyfish will absolutely help you paint glass. That's true. And sometimes painting nebulas will completely give you the breakthrough that you need to do you some clouds. Just, you know, these art skills kind of all interrelate. Everyone's like, how do you do space so well? Because, dude, I can really do some clouds. So this is just like having absolute fun the sources of light are crazy right nope got it too wet and just notice if you're getting it too wet because you want more gel medium in this right I'm painting this up painting it yeah if you get too much water it can get bubbles in there and you don't want that uh-uh. You just want translucent. And I will wipe my brush where I need to. So I've got that going there. Alright, now I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten up my blue. I'm gonna come over here to my white and I'm gonna create a very light er blue. Still add a little gel because I need it to be translucent. And up here, I'm going to just just dust. I'm gonna start to dust. Dusting the explosions and particles of space. I'm thinking about Carl Sagan and about the cosmos and about Barbarella and just anything that makes me feel spacey. I'm I'm sending the Millennium Falcon out. I am imagining this could be a place where the TARDIS could go. See how I'm just using this just ruined brush and I'm creating these like layers. Creating like layers here, okay? some highlight into this. I'm going to come over here and dust a little atmosphere. Yeah, dust a little atmosphere. Some here. Dust in a little bit. Just dust in it. And, and it's about really light pressure. You definitely want it to be blue, but you want the pressure to be light. Right? Because that's how you see the layers underneath. Because you don't want to lose the stars that you put in there. They should faintly shine through, right? They should faintly, faintly shine through. And that is something that you want. Yeah. And I think I'm going to get some dark blue again. And all of this, because I'm seeing that I want a nice little kind of arc of blue here. I'll come back. So you can just layer right over that. Layering, 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 layering. Being crazy, making sure my shapes are wild. And I really, here's the trick where space comes apart and falls apart for people is the panic. Like, it's not going to look like anything, dude. It always looks like something. You use this combination of colors and these random shapes 
as long as you're not trying to make a star map anybody has to follow and you're willing to just sort of relax about it, you are going to get some cool, cool, cool effects. I'm going to get some more blue here. Kind of come in here with that blue because I just really like it. I want to layer it. See, it's the layering. Layering it. Layering it. Now, the next color I want to get to, and I'm just going to dry my brush off with my paper towel. That's what I'm going to do. Dry my brush off. I'm going to get some dogs named Purple. Now, it is almost the color of the black already. Okay. So it's probably going to take a titch of white to just even get it to show up on any level at all. Dust it off here. I'm going to come here and make a little bit of a purple cloud. You know, when they take these pictures, they take several different pictures. They like look for infrared and they photograph the oxygen and then they layer them together so that we can get a visual representation of what's happening out there. Right? So even though we're enjoying these on Pinterest like crazy people, they may not be exactly how it would look in the darkness. I'm going to come right here and make a little shape right here of space. Okay? So remember, we're doing the Corinna Nebula. You know, so if you want to print out a photograph of that, for your reference to say, hey, I really want to do a very accurate starscape where I'm doing this for a star lover and I need to make sure, I need to be sure that what I'm putting out there is like the right thing. Dustin purple up here. See, I'm just scrumbling. This is scrumbling. This is scrumbling. You know another place you can get destroyed brushes is uh, sipping paints. A lot of times their brushes get so destroyed that they've uh, got to throw them out. And you could go by and be like, hey, kind of like the Starbucks grounds for your garden. Be like, I will adopt your ruined brushes because I need some. That's a place that you could go. The ruined brush of one space is the art tool of another. Like, I'm not even changing brushes here. I thought we were going to use all these other brushes. I'm kind of like right now just stuck with this destroyed brush. Loving it. Loving it. Purple right up here. I feel like it needs some purple. Come in here. Get some purple in here. And some purple. I like to add these little shades and tones. And Ooh, I feel like this needs some deep purple down in the corner. It's weird. The stuff shows up more than you think. I'm going to have some pink there. I'm going to come here, get some more blue on my brush, get some white. Because, for a fact, I definitely, definitely need to lighten this up right here. Too dark, too dark. Lighter, lighter. And just find it. You just you'll find the lightness, and you just want to scramble it in. Make sure that this has got some some lightness to it. Again, here this is about pressure, right? This is about pressure and randomizing the shapes. This is almost an abstract painting. Okay, this is what this is. Is almost an abstract painting. And you're just trying to find the story in this space, in this location. You're just trying to find it and tell it and make sure that the brush strokes are blended. Isn't it? Like, I love just destroying the brush. Ah. Okay. Go back to your star brush, whatever you're using. I'm going to get this again. I'm going to load it up with a little white paint. It's a little wet. All right. Dab it off to make sure there's not too much extra. My abused brush. And I'm going to splatter some more stars because we layer the space, don't we? We layer it. So, sorry background. Your face is gonna take it, man. Just know that. Your face will take some paint. I feel it hitting me. Again, you might wanna use the toothbrush flick, find a flick, and you can always practice on a piece of construction paper. 
so that you don't have to like are you seeing am i getting paint on my face i don't i don't know okay back in the water it goes up comes the hair dryer six inches away because it's like it's already starting to look like something. it's just crazy i love space <sighs> How is that looking? Spacey. The final frontier. There are those out there who think there are those down here that are lost through the galaxy for some unknown reason. Fighting Cylons. You don't know why. Everybody's a Cylon. Everybody's always a Cylon. Cake is a lie. Everybody's always a Cylon. Random geekery is happening today. So now we're going to pick some spots because we want some different kinds of stars, right? There's all different kinds of stars. If you're homeschooling, I imagine this is quite a teachable moment because you can talk about the very different types of stars, but we need to paint some of them in. And now is here we're going to get our little brush, right? This little teeny tiny detail brush. And we're going to get a little bit of our yellow. We're going to get some of our white. Okay. We might even get some of our red. We're going to give them like even a little orange cast. Okay. What we're trying to get is this sort of hot. And here I'm going to put some stars, some bigger ones that I can see. They're going to have some layers happening. Again, I'm sort of following the star map here, but then again, I'm sort of not. So, you know... Don't use this to navigate space, time, black holes, like anything super serious. Right here I'm going to put a nice big star, mostly because it has it. And this is just, as I'm layering, I want this sort of layered effect. And I'll put these in actually stronger again in a little bit. These are the yellows, and I'm going to come in and even do some blue and whites. It's like... Uh, Definitely, definitely get these bad boys in there, though. These bigger little plops of light, they make a difference, trust me. And they can even have slightly different tones. They can be like dot, dot. There's some cluster stuff happening there, and maybe one's here, right? Just painting some stars, because that's what we like to do. There's a big one that's going to happen here, so I'm going to put this circle in right now. This is not how everybody else does it. Believe me, you do it this way. You do it this. You can do this on the wall once you do it on the canvas. Once you practice this technique, you can mural a room. Do you know what they call the type of art where you know, I share with you teaching? and you do it at home through digital media, that's called dark matter art. Because we're in a democratized art, you and me. Because I know you can paint, you know you can paint, or you think maybe you could paint if somebody just explained it a little more, right? So, now rinse this out, and let's do some, um, let's do some white stars. Right, just some white ones with some blue. Just a few of those. Here and there. We'll come detail those out later. So let's dry those real quick. Dry them. Dry them. Got to layer stuff up. Now we're going to get our good galactic brush out. And we're going to kind of do up an orange tint, right? Because we want to we create that feeling of, of, of gas and shape. and We want it to be a little more red, though, than orange. And then I'm going to come here and get some of my gel, make sure it's translucent, tap off the extra on my brush. And I'm going to very softly up here dust a little gas. See, now I'm thinking about the planets that are in this sector of space. Maybe they're hat. Maybe there's some something living on it. Maybe it's a crystalline creature. You know, we always tend to think of things as life that reflects like how we live, but space is big. Stuff is crazy out there. 
not for nothing, it is crazy out there in the space, all right? It just is. Make sure you try to avoid regular shapes. Don't let it, don't let it trap you into making circles. You want to avoid making circles. Down here, I'm going to create kind of this little upward shape dusting, scrumbling as they say, a uh, soft, this is very light pressure that I'm using. Okay, I'm layering this orange over the purple and it creates this whole effect. I'm going to dust some out here. Put some gas in unexpected places, right? <laughs> The 10 year old kid in me is like just laughing for the copious amount of the word gas that we use. But art should be really fun and nothing that we could paint should be intimidating, man. A lot of people get really intimidated by the idea of space, right? And they don't just go, oh, this is just some form and shape and color. This is probably like the easiest, funnest thing I'll paint all day. Cause this is just form and shape and color. And probably if I just relax, so I'm making little circular motions, making little circular motions, painting some space with you guys. Now, hey, you can populate this with the Death Star if you're feeling highly destructive, or the Millennium Falcon, or the TARDIS, or the Enterprise. I have been known, when I used to teach at uh, Sip and Paints, which is where I actually was gifted this wonderful glass from the funnest party ever, um, I would on occasion in random paintings just include the Starship Enterprise, just for fun. Fun stuff that you can do to make it your own, to personalize it into your life. You could paint a BW bug out in space. It's your space. So I did this right after watching that movie Interstellar, which was like, I feel like a very good movie, but completely tripped me out, man. Completely was just like... I really liked watching the science of Interstellar to see like what they were thinking when they when they were making this because I was like, what? You crazy. Just crazy dusting it up here, some of this gas. Some of this gas. It's gonna come back with paint, but I wanna give it that layer. I feel like I need a little more orange red over here. Aren't you loving that medium right there? It's just thinning out your paint, letting it be translucent. And if you're painting with student grade paints, it probably just do this. All right. All right. I'm going to wipe off my brush. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little more red. I'm going to add just a titch of purple to it. A little more red, a titch of purple. Okay. I'm going to come in with that fun fun tone, right? Some of that in there. Just dusting it around the supper section. I don't take color across everything, right? That's not what I'm doing. I'm imagining the forces of nature that are happening in what used to be the Corona Nebula and is now sort of becoming my weird little nebula out in space that are causing these light effects. Okay? That's what I'm doing. I'm imagining them, seriously. And I'm, I'm loving imagining it. I'm gonna get a little more purple. All right, add a little white to it. Oh, that's a nice, nice color. Make sure I get a little of the gel medium. Come up here. I'm gonna dust some of this in here, right? So you just keep layering and layering and layering and layering. This is like seriously some fun stuff you can do. Could you do this on your blender? Sure. If you primed it with the right primer paint for painting on plastic and such, you could totally do this on your blender. Just saying. Oh, I did a flick. Sometimes in space stuff looks like it. there's solar winds that are blowing it. All right? These are our... This is our version of Happy Little Clouds today, right? Space clouds. Just love this. It's so fun. Just add 
some, add some gas here, you know? Even down here, maybe just a test, just, just a shading, because that's, that's what it likes. Just shading it up, kind of creating some of this here. A little scrambling here and there, right? Because we're, look at that coming together. Is that just crazy? You're like, it's blowing my mind. Now we need to get right into the pink. So I'm going to get a little of my red and a little of my white. I want something quite pink. I'm going to get a little gel so it's not too, I want something even lighter pink than that. Ooh, I like that. Dry it off on your paper towel. Now I'm just lightly dusting. I'm creating this sort of like solar windy gas around my star. Right? Because that's what happens. And, and I'm coming around. Now I'm kind of trying, trying to create some of these little shapes that I'm seeing in the in these doctored <laughs> space photos. I love the space program. May we never ever let it go. Ever. Seriously. We need to keep looking up. We do. We have a little trouble looking down, but we need to keep looking up. We need to keep wondering. I'm going to create this nice kind of basin of pink coming into this. How fun is this? Breaking up those shapes. You can really see it in the paint how I'm breaking them up. Might be dusting them, creating depth. See, like some of the stars are tinted by the paint. And come here. Come here. Just pick up a little more of this light color. That is just awesome. And you know, if you ever like, I need some darker color, you can come right back with a darker color, like the straight purple. And you can say, no, I, I need this darker, darker color right here. I just feel like that would be there. You know, you can absolutely do that. You can keep adding and adding and adding to it. I'm going to rinse this out because I'm going to add even more of a highlight. To everything. So I've got this like crazy like light blue highlight out there. Even more of that. Just lightly, lightly, lightly. I'm going to star this thing back up, right? Just making sure that my brush is light. It's just dusting. Just dusting. Wiping it. And I'm getting some white. Or a little bit of this pink. And I want even more white. That's a lot of white. I want that. Right there, look at that. Gas coming right there. So I'm so happy that it is. Right here. It's very light. Just creating those little spaces. And guess what we get to do again? It's star time. Get your star brush out. Because we get to get messy. And that's always good to get messy. We are nearly done with this, you guys. It's like the funnest, fastest, awesomest. Tap off, make sure you're okay. Hold your breath. <gasps> I feel.
feel like I got it. Now, if you feel like at any point you got some stars you were not as fond of, you can either dust them out, blend them in, like I'm doing right here, keep drying your brush, because it'll just become part of the space gate. Okay? So my point to doing this, it's not that any of this particularly bothered me, is just to show you that you are not stuck with anything. If something gets weird on you or you're not sure how you feel about it, this is space. It's big, it's infinite, probably whatever you painted up there exists somewhere in some fashion. I think you've got a good argument for like, hey, that would that could totally be in space. That could just be exactly like that in my section of the galaxy. I've watched a lot of Trek. I'm just saying it's out there. Gene Roddenberry covered it. As did Lucas. As as did the BBC. So your version of space is valid. Unless you're painting for like some highly technical person, human partner in your life who actually is going to be like, try to star map this and then, you know, I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay guys, get your little brush. I'm going to switch to my little bright right now and we're going to start doing some star work. This is where I feel like pieces like this really come together. I'm going to get a real light yellow. I'm going to come in here, get the inside of this. And I'm going to just come down and make this up down line, maybe some here, some here, and then dust. Again, this is all about pressure. When everyone's like, how do you do that? I work my pressure. That's how I do it. See, I'm leaving a little bit of darkness there. So there's tonality. So the stars have like heat and form. And then I'm just going to pick out some stars and I'm going to you know, make them. Got too much paint on your brush will be the number one thing that messes you up, which is all of this. You just work it. Just work it. Just get your star shine on. Right? Just get your star shine on. Because you don't know. I mean, we kind of know. We got some pretty good telescopes, but yours is just as valid as anybody else's. Alright? Yours is just as valid as anybody else's. You do this on a wall, just paint it black first, and then get, don't get house paint when you do this on a wall, right? Paint the wall black with house paint, with wall paint, and then get your acrylic paint to do these details. I've done a lot of murals, and uh, that's why I uh, get the results we get is we paint with the house paint first to get the base color and then we work the mural with our fine art paint. So I'm just putting in some stars here. Just populating my galaxy with some, isn't that just awesome as that's coming together? Some points of light, that's what I'm doing. That's what I like doing is like creating points of light and being like, this is where the magic happens. I feel like there's a cluster of these yellows here and you could go back and do a pink and yellow star. You can just work these. All the colors that you painted with, you can star with and you can all, like I'm going to come back and, and do some pink and yellows there. 
and just shine around that. So that was here. This fun. Isn't it easy? Oh my gosh. And if you're struggling, just keep at it. This is a skill I have absolutely 100% faith everyone can learn. It just is one of those things where if you just keep at it, you can learn it, you can do it. Um, it's just about learning the brush pressure and getting the paint thin and breaking up those shapes. And once you do those things, and the rest of this is just super easy. So I'm just putting in some stars. I'm going to get some pink star there. Back over these little yellow ones. Get some pink on that. Isn't that crazy? Because you can do that. Get some pink. Pink stars. I think up there needs some more stars. Didn't really glop from the center ever, but I'm just sort of finishing the sucker out, so. Just put some in there, right? That's what you're going. Just putting some in there, letting them twinkle, letting them shine bright. that see it just pulls together I think we are wrapping up I mean I am but you guys can keep going keep layering your nebulas keep dreaming your dreams and ooh, can't stop all right I'm um, good the galaxy of dreams you've just painted it and it wasn't even hard it's just fun and enjoyable, which is just everything in the geekery universe, I feel, is just fun to do just for fun's sake, which is probably why I'm just like, woo today. You, take care of yourself, be good to yourself, be good to the people in your lives, open your heart, access your art, live open-hearted, paint, share with me. I'm on Etsy, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Pinterest, I got a web page, it's all in the description, materials in the description. My artist guy is going to make a really cool pinnable of the materials list for this. So just go at Twitter, I'm on Twitter, just share with me anywhere what you're doing. Um, come on man, we are having a great time. Click comment, like, subscribe, because I need you, I need you to go with me to space and where great hats with me. All right, dear, dear, I did it, dance. I did it. I did it. I painted space today. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I painted space today. Hey, and it was easy. It was easy. And I painted space today because I did it. I did it. So rainbow. Bye-bye. I love you guys. See you soon. Keep painting. Uh -huh.